perhaps this will be a sloppy video but anyway uh, well there are a few say basic circuits of the um, use of a transistor also the tube by the way and that is the uh, grounded emitter the grounded base and the grounded collector of course this refers to uh, say the uh, transistor theory in the tube technology we also have the same ID there are say uh, grounded base circuits in tubes especially in the say the 1960s and 70s uh, the grounded base tube was used in ultra high F tuners uh, etc etc by the way also the transistor uh, uh, circuit made via the same principles was used in those days for uh, ultra high f um, tuners etc etc uh, grounded emitter grounded base grounded collector i don't pay attention to the grounded collector and to the grounded uh, base only want to pay some attention to the grounded emitter circuit because say it is overall used and it is very usable at the same time say we have here a voltage supply could be everything but between say 4 volts and let's say 18 volts and then uh, I want to refer to say transistor circuit um, here we have the transistor and I take in this example now a NPN transistor NPN that means um, that the uh, collector must be connected to the positive so this is the positive here also the positive lead that's a supply lead and here we have that resistor to that positive lead it can be at least when we look at this voltage range between uh, 1k and 3k 3 so through 3300 ohms well and of course we need here say a kind of bias to set that transistor into a proper bias and perhaps you think well this is very very simple in fact it's not very simple when we at least study the theory but uh, my only aim is now to show a practical circuit and that's the reason why we have here a potential meter and here we have a capacitor uh, in general the amplification ratio between the uh, uh, in not between but in this case of this uh, grounded emitter transistor circuit is for a big part set by the relation between the collector resistor and the emitter resistor so now we have in fact an amplifier you can use here for this transistor let's give it a star uh, uh, say a PC547B its amplification factor is very high say 300 of course you can also use other transistors say a B D139. Its amplification factor is approximately 150, uh, though it's a medium power. That means 
that it can handle more current. But of course, when we look at this circuit, uh, we can say fill in the say the standard values. Uh, the standard values to make this circuit work between 4 volts and 18 volts is here. 27k, here 10k. This resistor can be between 1k and 3k. 3, it adds a little bit to the higher or not higher amplification. Uh, this resistor is 1k. And here we have a capacitor. That capacitor uh, could be an electrolytic one. In that case we have here a positive and a negative. But you can also use a not electrolytic one. And that is in a certain way very very important. Because with that capacitor here, you can set the frequency band where that uh, grounded emitter stage works at its best. Uh, say, you can use this circuit for, let's say, a circuit of 500 kilohertz. Uh, that's not audio, of course. Audio is in general between 20 Hz and uh, 20 kHz. Let's try, let's see what, what you can do when you want to use this circuit for a higher frequency. Of course, the input capacitor must be much smaller, say in the order of 10 nanofarad. Output capacitor the same say 10 nanofarad. You can also go to 1 nanofarad, so 1000 picofarad. Uh, it means giving, say, the reactance, perhaps that's a good word, the reactance of that capacitor, it's, uh, say, uh, AC resistance changes very much uh, regarding to the frequency. That's say a classical electronics theory. So when you want to use this for 500 kc, you can use this. Of course, use a transistor that has the properties to amplify it on 500 kc. No problem with that. The BC547B surely can do that job. Anyway, and here, now here, with this relation between this uh, resistor and that resistor, you can set the amplification between, say, uh, 10 and perhaps 200. That means that you can realize here an enormous amplification when you want to use this circuit, for instance, in a 500 kilo cycles amplifier and that is a good property of the grounded emitter transistor circuit well let's wipe it out not 500 kc but audio wipe the capacitors input and output capacitor out also this capacitor at the emitter. Well, again, let's try to get an idea about how to use this grounded emitter circuit for audio. And audio, then I mean audio is uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilo hertz. Anyway. Of course, in such a case, you need uh, coupling capacitors that can, say, pass through, pass through the whole audio frequency band, audio. Well, uh, in that case, you need capacitors that can 
transport that and when looking at the say uh, properties of capacitors you can use here to transport that whole frequency band capacitors in the order of uh, 500 nanofarad up to say 3 microfarad and my idea is always use non-polar capacitors when you use polar capacitors electrolytics here could be that say you get a kind of tiny drain current here a current because an electrolytic capacitor does not isolate, isolate completely it means that a tiny current can flow into the base of the transistor that's amplifying and on the very very long term such an electrolytic capacitor leaks so much current that the whole circuit doesn't want to work any longer thus that's why I always use in my in my videos on YouTube and in my circuits non-polar capacitors here input capacitor here uh, output capacitor here here we have exactly the same uh, 500 nanofarad to say 3 microfarad non-polar and P what is the most important thing to tell when you are working with such a grounded emitter circuit that is this part of the circuit here I indicated red because this part of the circuit is responsible for the amplification these values are more or less say common 27k 10k here 1k and 3k 3 but this say this unit here is responsible for the amplification and not for only for the amplification but also for the frequency response so when you want to use this unit as an audio amplifier a microphone amplifier etc etc you need here a electrolytic capacitor and or a not electrolytic capacitor but a capacitor of a quite high value so here the positive here the negative and with 10 microfarad you can get a very good uh, amplification out for the bass frequencies the bass frequencies are in general uh, around say 50 Hertz to 300 Hertz and when you want to use this amplifier here as a audio amplifier or a microphone amplifier this capacitor must be of a very high value and in general it's an electrolytic capacitor of 10 microfarad and that 10 microfarad is say responsible to reproduce the complete audio range uh, my camera will stop suddenly anyway uh, this is more or less what I wanted to tell use it for audio you can use the whole circuit for uh, audio frequencies uh, frequencies between say 20 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz adapt the input and uh, the output and the input capacitor and this capacitor in the 50 nanofarad range and you can even use it as a high, frequ high frequency amplifier to approximately 10 megahertz and in that case the capacitors can to be used here input and output capacitor can be in the order of 100 picofarad up to 1 nanofarad so 100 picofarad up to 1000 picofarad thanks for watching that was more or less all my camera will stop suddenly now 
anyway, I hope uh, it was a little bit interesting. Thanks for watching.